AI design solutions are revolutionizing the way we do chip design. In fact, one could say that they are quickly turning into on-site expert digital design assistants, helping design teams identify optimal solutions much faster and with fewer resources. But a question that we get asked often enough is, is this scalable? In other words, can benefits from AI solutions be leveraged to do multiple designs on a chip or even multiple chips with the similar number of resources, essentially maximizing quality of results, qual cost of results, and time to results. Hi, Amesy. Thanks for joining today's podcast. Uh, tell us how uh, an AI system like Design Space Optimization AI should be used in order to kind of kickstart the first step towards reuse. Yeah, so thanks, Keith. Thanks for the question. Um, so yeah, DSO AI is a reinforcement learning system that continuously trains machine learning models searching for better PPA. Um, so you want to run DSO AI as early as possible so that you can leverage that learning for the rest of the design cycle. And with DSO AI, there's two modes that you can run it in. There's cold start and warm start. So in cold start mode, that's when you're running DSO for the very first time, you know, typically at the beginning of a brand new project, for example. And uh, with Cold Start, we have proprietary algorithms that bootstrap the learning so that we can build up those models as quickly as possible. And then after Cold Start, you can transition into Warm Start for the rest of the project. And with Warm Start, you can push PPA even further. Um, and with Warm Start, we're just building upon those ML models that we started creating in Cold Start. And that's where you really start to leverage the reuse of ML across the entire project. Um, and as you get towards the end of the project with Warm Start, you can actually do targeted one job replays. So you can replay the best frequency, the best power, the best frequency power trade off, whatever you like. And then you can take the output of those replays to tape out. Great. So it looks like uh, when we designed DSO AI, we have taken into consideration the various stages that a design typically goes through. Uh, but once DSO has learned or has been trained on one design, have we seen this successfully used across multiple blocks on a chip or even uh, on multiple chips for, for that matter? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, we have a lot of customers doing what we call cross design worm start. And so the idea with cross design worm start is that as long as the designs are similar, you know, GPUs, CPUs, modems, or whatnot, or if they have similar challenges like timing challenge, congestion challenge, or so forth, the idea with cross design worm start is you simply pick one of the designs and you do a cold start on the one, and then all the other designs simply worm start from there on. Um, so with cross design worm start, it really makes DSO very scalable and very reusable across the whole project. Great. Uh, we are talking about uh, leveraging AI. So a question that obviously comes to mind is how much compute is needed, especially when we're talking about scaling efficiently. Tell us what's needed to get started with DSO from a hardware perspective. Yeah, that's a great question. There's a misconception that DSO requires a lot of compute, and that's actually not the case. There are literally no restrictions. Uh, you can use as much compute or as little compute as you like. Now, obviously with machine learning, you know, more is always better, right? If you have more machines, you can do more learning. Uh, but what we see in, in practice with our customers is that customers that are doing cold start, they typically use maybe 20 to 30 workers. And by worker, I just mean one, you know, fusion compiler or ICC2 job running on eight cores. Uh, so 20, 30 workers for cold start, warm start, we see typically five to 15 workers. And then for a tape out replay, it could be just, you know, one to five workers. Great. And, you know, we are talking about uh, the era in which chip design is quickly moving to the cloud and combining the power of AI and cloud can truly accelerate, uh, you know, designing chips. So can DSO uh, avail resources on the cloud? Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, we had the cloud in mind when we architected DSO. Uh, so we really wanted to build a system that gave customers a lot of freedom to scale up or scale down you know, their compute usage throughout the whole cycle, depending on their schedule and, and how much they want to push PPA. Um, so we support full cloud model. We also support hybrid cloud model. So you can have a mix of on-prem and cloud resources if you like. And in fact, we have numerous customers that are running DSO AI on the cloud today for their tape outs. That is very insightful, uh, AMZ. Thank you so much for uh, sharing this with us. For more information on how you can get started with using Synopsys AI solutions, visit synopsys.com slash AI. Thank you.